Welcome to the Fraser Sangyong video that will show you a walk around of all the controls of a Sangyong Karando. Um, this will help you go through any features that you may not be sure about on your car. Um, it's basic, we will make it as exhaustive as we can, however we would always recommend that you, if you're not sure about something then please refer to your owner's handbook. Um, we'll start with some exterior stuff first of all. Um, so the keys are in my hand, so being a top of the range ultimate, it has keyless entry. So the car at the moment is locked. As you can see we've got it set for the, the, the door mirrors to be folded in when it's locked. Simply push the button, so at the moment it's locked. Push the button on the door, you hear it unlock. The mirrors open up when you have it set that way, and it allows you into the vehicle also has automatic locking as you walk away from the car so if you see him walk away from the car it will get you'll get a certain distance away it beeps the mirrors fold in the indicators go and the car is now locked again unlike a lot of keyless entry button um, systems where you ha when you walk up to the car again and check it's locked it will open up again a sang on you have to push the button that will let you open the car again so checking it you can check that the car's locked so opening it up again you also have a power tailgate on the ultimate automatic version which this one is and you can push the button there it beeps and it power opens So at the time of filming this, that is only available on an ultimate automatic gearbox version. You also have the rear parcel shelf, and that can come out just by squeezing the unit together, and 60-40 split for open the seats, just with that lever there. False floor, it comes in two pieces, so you can lift that and it gives you an extra hidden storage space or you can take the panels out or put them on the completely on the the main boot floor and that will give you a larger boot space but with these panels here when you fold the seats down it gives you a completely flat load area through and then underneath there is your inflation kit which is the standard equipment on all canatinos with the exception of the pioneer and an extra a spare wheel is available at extra cost just give us a shout um, and we'll let you know the pricing of it and to lock push the button and that will close the tailgate over on the ultimate automatics the fuel flap requires the doors to be completely unlocked not just the driver's one if you have it set that way and it pops open there this particular car is a petrol car you can tell it's only got the one there, uh, one fuel filler there, a diesel version which also takes add blue. The add blue filler is just there as well, and it's got a blue cap on it. Your top antenna there also unscrews off if you need to take it through a car wash, and then you've got your roof rail for load carriers at the front. You've got your LED front fog lights and then you've got your LED multi-focus headlights on the ultimate. All Sangyongs regardless of what they are all come with uh, daytime running lights front and rear. Uh, it's LED front and rear daytime running lights on the Carando. Um, when you have the handbrake off they, they come on When the handbrake's on the daytime running lights come off. So that's a brief walk round of the exterior controls and now we'll go into the interior of the car and we'll show you a bit more about it. So going into the interior of the car, the controls for the electric front seats on an Ultimate are at the side of each seat. So to operate them, it does say what they are, but you can recline I'll pull it forward with the top button, slide back and forward with the larger button and that also lets you change 
the height. And then you have electronic lumber on the driver side. So you that you should hopefully see moving in and out. So plenty of manoeuvrability in the seats to get comfortable. On the door itself, at the driver's side, these buttons here are your front electric windows, so you push it down for down, and it's auto down and auto up on the driver's side and passenger side on the ultimate. Electric door mirror movement is here, so you just move it to left, neutral or right, and then move the little joystick however way you wish. The button in front of that is for the power fold mirror setting, so if you have it completely to the right, the mirrors are folded in. And if I move that completely to the left, it keeps them out all the time and that means they'll stay out as well when you lock the car. To have them power folding in when you lock the car, which is in my opinion a preferable way because then you know the car's locked just by looking at it. Put that in the middle and then I said the mirrors stay out just now and then when the car's locked they will power fold in. The very back two buttons, that's a window lock, so pushing that in stops the windows from operating out of all the other buttons and that's a lock and unlock for the car so the car's got automatic lock speed sensitive locking on it so when you start driving away the car will lock if you want to let someone in the car if you're parked and the car is running then push that button and that will unlock the doors for you um, you can also set the car to just unlock the driver's side when you unlock the car by pressing the key or the, the button on the door handle once um, so if you do that and then you're in the car and you want to open up the other doors again, just push that or conversely if you're wanting to lock the car when it's open, then just push that button there. The panel just here as well, that's your headlamp levelling. So zero is the highest angle for this and then the, more, the higher the number, the more depth your beam goes, your low beam goes, um, more for when you're towing a vehicle or if the car's fully loaded. This button here activates and deactivates your lane departure warning, lane keep assist. So just the bottom right hand side of the dashboard there when I push that, that yellow light comes on. Ultimate automatics, like I said of the power tailgate, that's the button to open it from the inside of the car. That turns off your front and rear parking sensors and this is the illumination adjustment for all the displays. So we'll now go on to the, the main controls on the infotainment system, climate control and the instrument cluster. Okay, so inside the car, we'll go through the steering wheel buttons and the indicator and wiper stocks just now. So on the left hand side of the steering wheel, on the buttons here, we have the heated steering wheel on and off function. So by pushing that, you'll see just above the speedometer, uh, the digital readout there, zero miles per hour tells you that I've turned it on and if I push the button again it tells me I've turned the heat steering wheel off that button there answers and hangs up your phone call so the car has normal Bluetooth Apple CarPlay and Google Android Auto so no matter what function you've got you push that button it'll answer the phone mode will change you from DAB to FM AM to anything you've got plugged in device wise and that obviously activates your voice activation if you've got CarPlay or Android Auto on. Volume up and down is pushing up the buttons there. Mute is pushing the button down, uh, sorry, in towards the steering wheel. And then that seeks through radio stations or uh, music tracks, etc. On the right hand side, this left hand side of the this portion of buttons is the cruise control settings. So to have cruise on standby, push this button. And then again, it'll come up saying auto cruise standby. Um, and then if you see just below the zero miles an hour next to the, what looks like the traffic sign, just to the left of that, then it has a setting there as well. So that's for if you've got, uh, you've had the car set at 70 miles an hour on the motorway, you've had to slow down, it will tell you there what you had it set up before. So then if you resume, you know what you've got it set at. Uh, so to set this, the cruise control when you're at your desired speed, then set which is the minus button which is down the way you push that down and then it will set at that speed if you want to accelerate the plus button up the way when you want to decelerate push that down there if you want to cancel the cruise control either touch the brake or push the cruise button and then if you want to get back up to the speed that you had it at then push it up the way res is resume 
push it up and that will resume that. Uh, limit is your speed limiter. Um, up these two buttons here. The top one navigates through the top menu. If you see that going blue now, up the top, changing through everything. And then this button here, so it goes up and down and pushes in, navigates through the sub menus for everything. So that's the buttons I'll be using going through that. This one being automatic means it has paddle shifters as well. So the left one, the minus is down a gear, the one on the right is up a gear. Indicator and light stock on the left hand side here. So you have automatic headlights on all crandos. The ultimate version is LED multifocus headlamps. Pushing that off means they're off and it'll tell you light mode off at the top there, just above driving distance A there. Put it on, switch it on to auto, then it's light mode auto, then side lights and headlights. So putting them on auto just now. You also have high beam assist on the crandos, so to have that act activated for when you want to use it, push that away from you. And then you can see the auto green buttons just came on up the top there. So auto high beam assist basically means when you're driving along, uh, if you're on a road that's not lit, no cars coming towards you or cars in front of you, the high, that will put the main beam on itself. If there's cars in front of you, a car comes towards you, you want a lit up area, it will do, put, put the dip beam on itself as well. Inside that button there is your fog lights. So up one is for your front fog lights. Up again on a spring load there is your rear fog light. And then down is your uh, off button again. Right hand side your wipers. So if you just flick it up once, it will just wipe the front wipers once. Down one is your automatic headlight setting, uh, front wiper setting. And then you can adjust the sensitivity of that there. And then you've got your down again is your fast setting and then down is your very fastest setting. Rear wipers here, so off, intermittent, high wipe, fast wipe. Pull towards you for your front washers, push it away from you for your rear wash wipe and then that's an auto front wash wipe on it as well. Uh, push and hold that and it'll spray and wipe itself uh, for a bit longer. Um, so that's everything on the steering wheel and indicator stocks. Now we'll go through the instrument cluster. At the top of the car on the roof here, you've got your interior lights as well and your reading lights. You've also got the SOS call button. So if you're in the event of a, an emergency, push that button, it'll take you through to the emergency call centre. Sun visors, which light up when the panel opens up. And they also move over here and they extend. Okay, so now through the instrument cluster. So when we're going through everything of the top sub, the top menus above the top, remember we're using this button here, and then when we're going through the sub menus, we're using this button here. So first of all, on the right hand side, there's your fuel gauge. So the car's very low in fuel just now, the fuel light's on. So that would, when it's full, it'll come up with bars, just like the temperature on the left hand side there. So you can see the car's up to temperature now. Up the top would be lights for information. So obviously fuel light, I've not got the seatbelt on at the moment, so that's telling me to put the seatbelt on. And then that's the high beam assist, saying that it's active. And then on the bottom right here, you have the uh, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, um, saying that's active. And then that's got the cruise control on standby. I turn the cruise button up, which now actually that will deactivate. And then along the bottom there, you've got your outside temperature, time. This being an automatic, it's telling you that the car's in park. And then the odometer with the total mileage of the car. Um, so going along the top, we see on blue, we've got the far left setting just now, so we'll go through that just now. And then you've got your ref counter on the left, and your speedometer on the right. So your speedometer's there, and it's got the digital readout for it as well. So if you give the car a rev, you'll also see that the revs are also digital as well. So this car being brand new, um, the averages, it won't have done any miles to, to have averages, and what it will show probably won't be particularly good just now. But going through them, you get your driving distance A, so distance, average speed, drive time. Now holding in the sub-menu button has zeroed that. Driving distance B as well. So if I hold that in as well, you can see it says hold to reset data at the bottom there. And after departure, again, okay. 
and then driving range showing 41 miles left in the tank fuel economy obviously as I said the car's brand new so it's not going to be uh, anywhere near um, showing what it should be auto stop and then tyre pressures once the car's driving it will start measuring your tyre pressures and it shows you what they all are around all four wheels then on to the different display for your instrument cluster so this is just then a speedometer and that's all your digital speedo is there in the middle and then that's your uh, traffic sign recognition so when you're going along it will recognise what uh, on, on roads it will recognise what the speed limit is and let you know so if you put the cruise on standby it will tell you there as well you also have a different display for that which is that one and then pushing it again takes you into your lane keeping standby so it goes back to your normal rev counter speedometer setup so lane keeping on standby and driver level awareness as well uh, so we'll, we'll go through what all that means or, or show you where to find out where everything means as well um, as we, we go through onto the settings which is the far right button pushing the button again takes you onto your infotainment so the car is showing DAB just now um, if you've got anything else on radio wise FM, AM etc then it will show you there as well next one to go into is your navigation so we've got the navigation on the map there just now we've not got any destination set up at the moment um, but it's got the 2D uh, map there and here you can just see the uh, in between the, the speedo and the rev counter you've got your 3D map now if I push the button it zooms in and zooms out push the button down you can see then your speedo goes to the right your rev counter goes to the right, uh, left and you've got your full 3D map there as well while still having the 2D map on the display there push the button again it should load up exactly what is on the main screen here so then if I push home there which gives me the split screen with a bit more infotainment then it mirrors exactly what is there so then if I push the map it will change the map to exactly what is shown there as well so you can have that set up very various ways, whatever way you prefer. Then going back to the other thing, so destination not set, that's what it says just now. Obviously, if you had a destination, it would tell you when to turn left and a bit more information about your uh, journey. And after that, it will take us back to the 3D um, portion of the map. Push that again, takes you to your settings. Uh, so we'll go into drive assist settings first. Now at the bottom of all these sub menus, just to show you first of all, where it says help, push that, and it explains what everything means. So your autonomous emergency braking, what it means, forward collision sensitivity, speed limit warning, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, emergency lane keeping, traffic sign recognition, front depart vehicle departure alert, driver attention alert, safety distance alert back to autonomous emergency braking it goes through what everything means so when you're looking through these and you're not sure if you want them on or not rather than scrolling through the owner's manual or the brochure just go down to help and it'll explain everything for you and obviously that's what the help button's talking about all the settings there so you can have them on and off and adjust sensitivity etc there same dashboard settings Again, settings and info, check up alerts about when the car's due at service. Display settings, again, day and night mode and then a help function as well. Vehicle settings for your door and your tailgate, so you can have the power tailgate set up. Um, you can have auto lock set up differently, speed sensitive door locking you don't need to have on. Lots of various things there as well. That basically take, takes us through everything on the instrument cluster. So next thing we'll do is go through the uh, climate and control settings as well and also the infotainment system. Okay, so your climate controls and the rest of the controls down the centre tunnel. So again, ultimate is Jill's own climate control. So you can see the car is set at 18 degrees both sides there. 
if I adjust that to the left, it goes low or lower temperature and you go to the right, it gets higher and it mirrors on both sides the way I've got it set just now. Sink, the, the white light uh, bar above it disappears and that would allow me to just change the driver's side and passenger side independently. I hit sync again and then it'll go back to mirror on the driver's side. This button here is your recirculator fresh air, fan speed up the way for faster, down for slower, airflow direction, aircon on or off, so I've now got it on. And I'm changing all these as well just to show you. It also shows on the main display. So if I've got the aircon off there or on, change the airflow direction. I'm changing the temperature. It also shows up there as well. And then it shows it's on sync also. Back window heaters there also heats up the door mirrors at the same time. And your hazard is in the middle there. Further down, start and stop the car. We use that. Always have a, it won't work without a foot in the brake on the automatic foot on the brake and clutch for a manual. Being an ultimate, it's heated, heated seats from the front and ventilated or cooled seats as well. So doing the heated seats version is what, first of all, you've got three settings, so that's the hottest, and then you can change it down. It's off, and then again for the ventilated seats. You can have different settings or strengths for that also. USB inputs there, and then your power outlets there as well. Down here you can turn your automatic start stop off from there. Turns off your traction control, ESP, etc. there as well. That's your hill descent control. And then for the automatic you just push the lever and pull it down whatever way you want. Then you've got your drive modes and stuff as well. So you've got auto hold so you have that function. Uh, ultimate automatic has the, the, the uh, ultimates have the pa uh, electric parking brake. And then you've got your sport winter button. This one being a petrol, ultimate means it's two wheel drive. Four wheel drive is also to the right hand side of the four wheel drive lock function there. But doing so, if I twist this dial, it then changes on drive mode on the display here normal, sport, and winter. So it would just be personal preference and what you prefer for that. And that's everything for the, the centre tunnel there. Now, onto the infotainment system itself. Again, you can personalise this and it, takes, it depends on your, your uh, smartphone device as well, how it would work when it's plugged in. Um, power and volume controls up the top here. It takes a micro SD for the navigation, which goes in here. And then if we start from home, it gives us a split screen. You can go from into your navigation there and your uh, stereo, whatever we've got. I've actually got that off just now. Turn it on again. That's it there. Power the screen off there by accident. Uh, so going into mode from here, let's you pick. If I put it in a tiled setting, it'll be, uh, make a bit more sense to show you everything. So you've got your radio. Then it's either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So if you've got a device plugged into the USB, so like an, uh, an iPhone, for example, then that'll light up and it'll take you into CarPlay. Media, from any uh, media uh, device that you've got plugged in, you can take go to your navigation, Bluetooth to set up your Bluetooth, and it'll allow Bluetooth, Bluetooth music and everything, everything's paired if it's a compatible device. From there, so go back into just to home just now, into your radio, and then you can hold your presets to set it there, seek through radio stations, that adjust from DAB to FM, etc. Back to home. You can hit destination there to start setting a destination for your sat nav, or you can go into here. The car has a rear parking camera as well, so if I put that into reverse, it will show on here. That's the same for a Ventura or an Ultimate. Okay, so if you go into, so from here you can have 2D or 3D, whatever setting you'd rather have. And you can zoom in or zoom out. If you go into menu and you want to set up a destination, uh, so you can 
search at home a recent destination current route would if you've got a route set you can go into there and that would be how you'd cancel it my routes parking places petrol stations etc you can also set it with a voice that you'd prefer as well uh, so if we go into search uh, so we're at our Falkirk branch just now so I'll just put in the postcode for our Edinburgh branch Corgi Road, 23 miles from here, push that, then you hit drive, calculating the fastest route, and then hit let's go, and then we go, and it will start telling us where to go, and how to get there. It's also saying that there is a speed limit warning there, that's actually one just at uh, New, How uh, New, uh, New Bridge, just under the, under the flyover. And then I said if you want to go to current route, then you can clear the route or you can avoid block roads and all that. That's what be back playing about with that one to get it set the way you want. All those buttons there also then go various things so you can go into mode. So it's a shortcut rather than using the main touch screen. Um, so it's completely personal preference for that. So it does take a lot of playing about with to get used to. Um, there is an awful lot in the car, um, a lot of it's kept hopefully reasonably intuitive. If you have any queries and obviously you can, you can contact us at the dealership, uh, your owner's manual is there as well and also the help function for some of the sub menus in there is very handy as well. And that completes our um, controls video for the Sangyong Carando. Um, like I said, if you need any help, then we're, we're here to help as well, uh, the dealerships, uh, both Falkirk and Edinburgh. So if you're not sure about something, pop in or give us a phone. Thanks for watching.